Um, good morning, Moabudu. Good morning, kid. My name is Dami from Bella, Niger. How are you doing today? Fine, thank, Fine you. thank you. So, uh, it's a few days to the premiere of Blood Sisters. How does it feel? It feels uh, totally exciting. I can't wait uh, for the world to see what was created. It's going to blow them away. That's yeah, guaranteed. Absolutely. No lie. <laughs> We're not lying. We're not <laughs> boasting. We're just being real. Even if I say so. Yeah. <laughs> So I would like to say congratulations. And Kate, your character was one of the strongest in the series. What drew you to her? And can you tell me about your preparation for your role? It was a challenge to be her. It was. I needed to dig into the recesses of my my heart and my talent as an actor, because I, I believe an actor should have a wide range, uh, to be able to play a wide range of characters. And for me, I've done TV, stage, and film, so I have across the board, um, a lot of experience. But this character I've never played before. Uh, this is my first time playing such a, a character. And um, in preparing for her, I needed to go to, I don't know, be an older person in my mind, but in her body, she's very young. Mm. You know, she doesn't want to age anytime soon, but she is mature and her movements and her thought processes are very um, structured, ruthless. She knows exactly what she wants. Mm. She doesn't take no for an answer. So when you see her, you can't even say no. You know, her presence alone just takes over any space that she's in. And in preparing for that, I had Big Sis more to thank for that. Uh, she helped me even with the aging process because I needed to be aged to look like someone who was older to be able to carry off um, the character. And she did it beautifully, beautifully, honestly. She really embodied that person. It's not her, she said, but I don't know where she found she was hardcore. You said find her. She, I said find her. She was so hardcore. I mean, we just did a post this morning, and there's a picture of her at her son's wedding, and she's like, I mean, who does she that? She said, who, who, who does, does that? like that at her son's <laughs> wedding? <laughs> but she does. She did. Awesome. Um, well, were there any specific intentions or criteria when casting the lineup? Of course, we wanted the best of the best. This is Nigeria's, Netflix's first Nigerian original series. You know, we are making history here. So it was important that we found the best people for every single role. So, of course, we had a, a short list. But, I mean, deep down in your soul, you kind of feel like this is going to be the right person for each role. Um, and then they read. And in most cases, I got it right with this one. I was like, yeah, I got, I got Kate right. I got. And then some I didn't get right with others. And then we swapped them around until we found where they would be most comfortable. It's, you know, we have two amazing directors. We have great producers, um, myself, Heidi. All of us sort of said, OK, what do we think? Who do we think is going to be best for each of these roles? Um, but by the time we were done, you know, and of course, Netflix also played a role, we found that we had found the right people. And all you need to do is watch. Just watch. It's like they become the characters. It's like an, almost like an out-of-body experience. It's like, is this really Kate or is this Udua? Yes. You know, it's that kind of thing. Is this really Ini or is this Sarah? Is this really Nancy or is this Kemi? I mean, they really embodied those roles so well. I am so proud. Um, you know, I'm so proud of this work. Really proud. Um, um, Mo, in three words, how would you describe Blood Sisters? Mm. Oh my God. It three is, words. in three words, it is thrilling. It is pulsating. Mm. It is, it, it is exciting. TPE. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I mean, I binged it so many times. I mean, that's one of the benefits of being the producer. You get to see it as often as you like. And I just sit there like each time I'm like, wow, we actually created this. And as I've said time and time again, it is a black story from Nigeria, it is an African story, and it is made for Nigeria and the world to see. This is really, really a very special project that I think people around the world are going to love. The backdrop is the city of Lagos, 20 million people. You see the rich, you see the poor, you see absolutely everything. So I think the world is going to love this one. I'm convinced. I'm con what do you think, Kate? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay, so a line, Kate, a line from your role that you know by heart, like if they wake you up, you say oh, wow. a line from your role. Oh my <laughs> gosh, a line from my role. <laughs> um, um, lunchtime is over, people. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Mm. Uh, this straight face was even there.
Lunchtime is over, people. Lunchtime is over. It's people. over. Mm. Uh, so, what do you hope people take away from the series? A lot, a lot about friendships, about um, relationships, uh, about family, yeah. about values, about just about the society that we live in. Um, this story is so relatable to Nigerians anywhere in the world, and to mm. Nigerians in particular living here, mm. and anywhere in the world, really, how the rich and the poor interact, uh, social, societal issues that are still relevant today, they're going to take away a lot, a lot. Domestic abuse yes. plays a massive role a in this. A lot. Drug abuse, which you is know, happening everywhere um, in the world. Societal pressure in um, terms of... Marrying yeah. into rich families. Children not you know, being able to, to... To make decisions based on and logic. To, and to speak to their parents. Yeah. It's very important that your children find you a safe space. But mm. if they cannot, they're going to find it outside there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's for sure. Uh, Nollywood, so Modi's question is for you. Mo Nollywood productions have always had global recognition, but especially so recently, thanks to social media and, of course, Netflix. How do you feel about the follow-up of the success of films like Castle and Castle 2 and Chief Daddy 2? And what makes Blood Sisters different from the rest? Um, I think for us, it's important that each time we work, we get better and better and better than the last work that you did. Um, I never want to get to a point where I believe that have I have arrived. God forbid. I'm never going to be that person. I am proud of this work. I think it's our best work yet. But I do know that the next work we do will be better than this. But this is incredible work. I am so, so, you know, bowled over by what we've done here. But I never want to, as I said, I never want to get too comfortable about that. But in terms of, yes, we've done the Chief Daddies. Yes, we've done the comedies. Yes, we've done all these other projects over the years. But I think we're getting into a space now whereby the next lot of projects that we roll out are going to be... Um, slightly more adventurous, I would say. Use the word adventure. Like Blood Sisters. Like Blood Sisters. Very global in scope. You know, projects that the world can buy into. You know, I want to say we're making local for global. Mm. Sometimes you do we're local deep. for deep. local. That's deep. But we're doing local for global. So I think that's where we are as Ebony Life. You know, it's like we need to transition into that global space, because I truly believe that it's Africa has remained silent for too long. Mm. Our storytelling needs to hit the world. We need to be seen, we need to be recognized, and we need to be heard. And, those are the, and you can only do that when you tell storytelling at a particular level, with a particular production value, and a particular cast, and everything else that goes along with it. And I think we have arrived at that point whereby we know that we may be based in Nigeria, working out of Nigeria, we have a London office, we have an LA office now. We are a global organization making programs and TV content. Remembering the black experience is key for the world. And that is where we are and that's where we're going. And that's where we have gone with this. Okay. I think anyone in the world, it doesn't matter if you're from Russia, well, let's not, maybe not talk about Russia no, right now. No. <laughs> you know, if you're from Germany, if you're from Norway. I mean, this weekend there was a two-page article on yours sitting here in a Norwegian newspaper. I couldn't even read what it said because I don't speak Norwegian, but someone sent it to me about the fact that it's time for black storytelling to be taken seriously. So it doesn't matter if you're from Norway, if you're from Germany, if you're from France, wherever you are, the UK, Australia, our stories are just as important. Mm -hmm. And that is the message that I want to get across to the world out there today, that, you know, watch us. You know, we're coming. We're coming. I think it's also important that our culture, which yes. is very rich, yes is also seen, seen by the world. Yes, yes. Yeah, we have rich yes, culture and yes, tradition. Yes, yes. yes. And, and it's present in Black and, Sisters. And to pick up on what you said, we shared a screener of this with someone in the UK. She said what she loved most about this was our fashion and yes. our culture mm -hmm. and the music, you know. And those are the things that people are going to love about who we are because that, that really puts us in a world of our own. So this is my last question, and I would love for more to go first. What can married couples or soon-to-be couples learn from Sarah and Kola's relationship? Mm -hmm. Do not be silent. Do not be silent. If you're in a relationship where you are witnessing any type of abuse, be it physical, be it mental, you need to speak to someone. Um, mothers need to be careful about how they raise their sons. 
Mm. Mothers need to be careful about how they raise their daughters, knowing what's important and what's of value. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this, is that the reason why these things happen in our society is because we think that it's okay that, you know, who, who is there for you to talk to? What is, what is the alternative? The alternative is do something about it. That is the alternative. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, for me, it's more personal because I've worked in this space with a lot of NGOs, uh, Mirabel mm. Center, Project Alert, we said yes, even when we well, did screen divas, um, Cheche Yara Foundation, Warif, which is the Women at Risk Foundation. I've done a lot of work with them. So in the relationship between um, Sarah and Kola, it is important that at the first sign of violence, mm. be it physical, emotional, psychological, you speak speak to the partner and tell them that this is not what you're about. Mm. And if it happens again, that's it. But you see, people see the signs and they say, oh, it will change. Mm. Oh, my pastor will talk to him or we'll pray. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. No, please. Your yeah. life is so valuable that no one has a right to put hands on you for any reason. Reasons you're not whatsoever. an animal. Yeah. Even dogs, they don't get beaten that yeah. way. You know, So yeah. it's important that we know what we want. If you want to live long, you need a partner that first respects you. When there's respect, there will be love. Mm. And then there will be, you both can work on the issues. But don't go in, seeing the signs, seeing the raised voice, hearing the raised voice, feeling, you know, the the anger. And you say, oh, when you get with okay. that, when we have children, it's really yeah. maybe you say, no, there's no excuse no. for any sort of violence in any relationship. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Thank you so much for you. making the, uh, the time to speak with me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.